You guys remember that yesterday we talked a little bit about the distance formula, right? Rockstar. Yeah, the rock star, right? And we talked about how um, we could use the distance formula to find the length between two points or bet like the length of a segment, right? So let's really quickly write down the distance formula up top up here just so that we remember it. Okay, and remember I told you guys that silly little story yesterday of how to hopefully help you remember it. Okay, so draw the rock star's forehead. He looks like SpongeBob, square head, square pants, whatever. Is it SpongeBob square pants? Okay, now let's draw his eyeballs. Okay, he was sleepy because he partied way too late. He got his eyebrows pierced, making some bad decisions maybe. And he got himself sick, so he had a runny nose. And... In this class, did we say why we had the X's and the Y's in here? No. Okay, this is what third period came up with. He was a rock star, so he all rock stars must have tattoos, so he got some eyeball tattoos. That's what they came up with, which kind of creeped me out, and I think it's kind of gross, but I'll go with it, okay? So, here's his tattoos. I don't know why anyone would get tattoos on their eyeballs, but whatever. That's what third period came up with. All right, so there's our formula, okay? All right, so now what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and use this set of points because it wants us to find the distance between each pair of points. So this is going to be our first set that we're going to be working with, okay? So the first thing we want to do is we want to take this set of points and label them like with x1, y1, x2, y2, okay? So there's an x and a y here, and there's an x and a y here. And this one is the first set of points, so we're going to put 1s. And this one is the second set, so we're going to put 2s. Okay? Does that make sense, our labeling so far? Yeah? Okay. Now we're going to go ahead and do the outline of this. I'm going to fill in everything except the x's and the y's, okay? So the distance is going to be, and then I'm going to draw my rock star, his forehead, his eyes, his piercings, and his runny nose, right? I'm going to draw all of those things. Okay, now... What I'm filling in after I do that is I'm filling in first the x values. So the two x values are going to go right here. So what numbers are going to go in the places of the x's? Looks like negative 1 and what else? 0. Okay. Does that make sense why those are going there? Okay, now let's go ahead and fill in our y values, which are negative 6 and negative 7. Okay, so now we just want to simplify this whole expression. Okay, so when we go ahead to simplify this, negative 1 minus 0 just gives me what? Negative 1? Okay. Now, on the next one, don't forget, this double negative here makes a what? Plus. A plus or a positive. So this is actually going to change to say negative 6 plus 7. Okay? If you're not sure what the answer to that is, do it on your calculator, negative 6 plus 7. But you should get positive 1. Okay? All right, now we're squaring both of the numbers. Don't forget what it means to square a number. You're just multiplying it by itself. Okay, so negative 1 times negative 1 gives me what? Positive 1. And then 1 times 1 is also 1. 
Okay, so from there we're going to add. So inside the root I get 2. Okay, now when I get to this part, what I'd like you guys to do is on your calculator, you're going to figure out what the square root of 2 is and estimate it to be like some type of decimal. Okay, so depends on your calculator. Some calculators you have to hit the square root button first and then put in the number. Other calculators you have to put the number first and then hit the square root. It just depends on what kind of calculator you have. Okay, If you just have your phone that you're using, if it's um, an iPhone, do you guys know like on the calculator you have to, when, if you're here, you don't have a square root button, right? But if you turn it sideways, you guys know it gets like a bunch more buttons, right? So on the iPhone, I think you have to hit the number first and then you do the square root button, which is this one with the little two. That's the square root button there, okay? So either way, we get the same thing, which is 1.4142 blah, 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 blah. Okay, so I want you guys to round it to the tenths place so you have one decimal at the end, okay, after the decimal point. So is this one telling me to round the four up or leave it alone? Leave it alone, right? So we just get 1.4, okay? This is your final answer, all right? Okay, are there questions on how we did that one? Any questions there? Okay, what I would like you guys to do right now is I'd like you guys to try problem number two. Okay, so I'm going to give you guys a couple minutes and then you can try that one. Okay, if you finish it before we check it over and there's other people in your group, check with those people. See if you guys are, you know, getting it correct, getting the same thing. Okay, let's go ahead and check your progress. So hopefully when you guys labeled, you plugged in negative 2 and 3 and then 1 and 5. Is that what you guys did when you plugged in? Okay. Then when you put these together, hopefully you got negative 5. And then for this one, hopefully negative 4, right? Okay, when we squared those, we should have hopefully got 25 plus 16. Was that what you guys got? Okay. Now, what was 25 plus 16? What was it? 41. 41. Okay. Now, we're going to go ahead and take the square root of 41. So, what was the square root of 41? 6.4. And there's a zero after this, so I'm not going to round that 4 up. So, the distance is about equal to 6.4 units. Okay. How many of you were able to get that? Correct. Okay, nice work, guys. Good. Okay, so let's take a look at number three. Okay, what's different about problem number three than problems number one and two? You need, you need to find the, the points, and the points are not given. Yeah, the points aren't given to us. Okay, so we're going to have to find them. We're going to use the graph here, and we're going to use the location of the endpoints as our points, okay? So what I have to do is I have to label each of these endpoints. So this one right here, I went in the negative direction, 1, 2, so that's negative 2. And then I also went down, which is in the negative direction, 1. So negative 2, negative 1. Okay, does that make sense how I labeled that ordered pair? Okay, then this one down here on the bottom, I went over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 in the positive direction, but then I went down 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 5, negative 5 would be my ordered pair there. Okay. So in this type of problem, you have an extra step because you have to figure out what these two points are. If you, for, like, if you don't count correctly or you forget the negative, if you're going in the negative direction, then it's going to make your whole problem turn out wrong. Okay, so make sure you take your time figuring out these points before you start plugging them into your problem. Okay, now, would you like this one to be the first point or the second point? The first one. The first one? Okay, so I'm going to call this one x1, y1, and then I'll call this one x2, y2. 
Okay, and so now I can go ahead and I can just put this into my formula, right? So the distance is going to equal, and I'm going to do my whole outline of my rock star first before I plug in any numbers. Okay, so there's the whole outline. Now I can plug in my numbers. Okay, so for the x's I'm plugging in negative 2 and positive 5. And for the y's I'm plugging in negative 1 and negative 5. Okay, and now let's just go ahead and simplify this and work it out. So for the first set of parentheses, negative 2 minus 5 is negative 7. Okay, this one here, this double negative is turning into a plus or a positive sign. So I have negative 1 plus 5. Negative 1 plus 5 gives me 4. All right, so now I'm going to square each of those. Okay, the first one makes 49. The second one makes 16. Okay, when we add those, what do we get for that? 65, good. Okay, and now I can go ahead and put that into my calculator and see what I get. So the square root of 65 I'm just approximating it. It's 8.06. Okay, so if it's 8.06, I want it to end at this place value here. What do I do with the zero? Round it up or leave it alone? <coughs> Round it up because the number next to it is five or higher, right? So it's going to be 8.1, about equal to. Now make sure you guys are making this like squiggly equal sign because that means it's approximately equal. It's just telling us that we did have to like estimate that number. Okay, it's not exact, but it's very, very, very close. Okay. All right. Um, what I'd like you guys to do is go ahead and try number four. Okay. Before you plug your points into your formula, double check with someone at your group on what your ordered pairs are that you guys wrote down. That way, you're making sure you're plugging in the correct numbers to start. Okay. So I want you to label the ordered pairs and then share with your group what you got for the labeling on each point, okay? Before you start. All right, go. All right, let's check your progress of where you guys are at. Okay, so this is where you guys should be, like, at least hopefully this far. Did you guys plug in these things correctly? Yeah. Okay. All right, then when we started simplifying, hopefully what we got for this set of parentheses was negative 10 inside there. Is that what you guys got? And then for the other one, negative 4. Okay, negative 10 squared was 100, and negative 4 squared was 16. So what was 100 plus 16? 116. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and take the square root of that. Okay, so let's see what we get. Okay, so what I'm getting is 10.77. So 10.77, what am I going to round that to? 10.8. Okay, how many of you got 10.8 for your answer there? Okay, nice. Good job, guys. Okay, now we're probably only going to have time to do one of these ones today um, out of numbers 5 and 6. So we're going to go ahead and take a look at number 5. Okay. Um, on number five, look at what the question is asking. Look at the instructions first. What do the instructions say? Okay, so it's not actually asking me how long. Okay, the answer is not going to be a number. The answer is, are they the same or are they not the same? That's what it wants to know, okay? So how am I going to determine whether or not they're the same? So maybe if I find the length of each of them and then compare it. Okay. So 
to be able to like talk about these two lines and like refer to them, I'm going to highlight this one yellow and I'm going to highlight the other one pink just so when I'm talking about them I can call one the yellow line and one the pink line, okay? All right, so which one do you guys want to find the length of first, the yellow line or the pink line? Pink. Yellow? Okay. All right, so let's go ahead and label our points for the yellow line. Okay, so this point over here is negative 3, comma 1. And this point over here is 5, comma 4. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and call this one the first point, so x1, y1. And this one over here can be the second point, x2, y2. Okay, now I'm going to go ahead and do the template for my distance formula. So I'm going to draw the forehead, the eyes, his piercings, his runny nose, he's sleepy. Okay, I've got the whole template there. And after I have the template, then I can fill in the numbers. Okay. So the numbers going in the X spots are negative 3 and 5. And the numbers going in the Y spots are 1 and 4. Okay. So negative 3 minus 5 gives me negative 8. And 1 minus 4 is negative 3. Okay, I'm going to square both of them. So I get 64 plus 9. And then what is 64 plus 9? 73? Is that right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and find my calculator. Okay, and let's take a look and see what I get. So the square root of 73. And then, can you go really quickly down to the attempt, um, to, you know who Mrs. Garcia is at the office? In, like, the main office? Yeah. I can go, yeah. Yeah, can you go, um, to, she has something for me, so you're going to pick something up from her. Okay. Okay, sorry about that, guys. Okay, so, what do we get here? 8 point what? 8.5. Okay, 8.5. Now, 8.5 is not the answer, because we're trying to see if the two lines are the same length. Okay, so now what do I need to do? Yeah, let's do the same thing with the pink line. Okay, so we're going to label the ordered pair here. So this one is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. It was negative 5. How much did I go up here? None, so 0, right? And then this point here is 1, 2, 3, down 1, 2, 3, so 3, negative 3. Okay, I'm going to label them x1, y1, x2, y2 for my pink line. And I'm going to do my work for my pink line over here. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and fill in my x's, negative 5 and 3 and fill in my y's, 0 and negative 3. And then I'm just going to start simplifying and see what happens. Now what happens to this one? Plus, so 0 plus 3? Three? 3. 3. Now I want you to look at this step that I'm at here and the similar step in the other problem. I notice that the number here, negative 8, is the same, but the 3 is a different type of 3. Does that necessarily mean that the lines are going to be different lengths? No. Because what happens when I square this 3? What do I get? 9. What happens when I square this 3? What did I get? 9. Because when I square any number, it becomes positive, right? So even though these two numbers don't match exactly, they produce the same positive result when I square them, right? So now look at what I have. Are they, in fact, going to be the same length? Yeah. 
Yeah, because when I continue to work this all out, I'm getting the exact same thing now. I'm basically just copying the rest of the steps here. Okay. And so, what is the actual answer? Yes, they are the same. Yes. Yes, they are the same length. Okay. All right. Are there questions on anything that I went over today? What would have happened if inside here I ended up with a totally different number? Like, say I got the square root of 55. What would my answer then be? No. 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 Okay. Does that make sense? Okay. Okay.